We've been waiting forever for Bridgerton season three, and now they're teasing us with a split season. If you're as impatient as I am, you're probably itching to know what happens next. Don't worry, I am coming to the rescue. Help me! But how do I know what's to come in the remaining episodes? Well, apparently, a YouTube reviewer who got early access to the first six episodes accidentally posted reviews for episodes five and six, thinking they were part of part one. By the time the mistake was caught, tons of people had already watched it. And that's how we know all this juicy info. So, let's dig into the spicy leaks and spoilers for Bridgerton Season 3 Part 2 and find out what's in store. Grab your teacups, it's about to get scandalous. Episode 5 picks up right after Colin proposes to Penelope, and of course, she says yes. Why wouldn't she? They rush to share the news with the Bridgerton family, surprising everyone, especially Eloise. Mother. Oh! I'm delighted for you both. Eloise is concerned that Penelope might have been friends with her only to get to Colin and that she hasn't revealed her identity as Lady Whistledown to him. So, Eloise presents an ultimatum. It's either Penelope who tells Colin the truth or her. If it's too difficult for you to reveal the truth, I won't reveal it to him myself. Pen, on the other hand, seems to have her priorities straight. Lady Whistledown scoop first, marriage discussions later. Hey, it's her engagement. Front page news, baby. Meanwhile, Benedict learns of the engagement from Lady Whistledown's latest issue while spending the night at Lady Tilly's. Talk about multitasking. Colin Bridgerton betrothed to Penelope Featherington. And here's the exciting news. Cantony are coming back from their honeymoon with a baby on the way. Now that's what I call efficient vacation planning. Concerned about Colin's quick decision, Anthony and Benedict take him for drinks. Colin reassures them that he truly loves Penelope, even if the timing seems a bit hasty. What a hopeless romantic. Congratulations. But you must admit it's all rather sudden. I have known her a very long time. But perhaps it did all happen rather... Swiftly. Huh? Ah, it's swift because you... Are you going to duel with your own brother? <laughs> oh. At the Featherington household, Portia's not pleased with Penelope, accusing her of losing Lord Debling and trapping Colin. Right then, Colin defends Penelope, declaring his love for her. Afterwards, they go to their future home, where things get steamy. Many believe that the mirror scene will happen here. Meanwhile, Colin and Penelope receive a pamphlet revealing the Queen's plan to uncover Lady Whistledown's identity, complete with a $5,000 prize. Colin's thrilled, but Penelope's reaction? Well, let's just say she's not exactly jumping for joy. But hey, who can blame her? I would rather die. Back home, Penelope is bullied by her sisters again, but surprisingly, Patria defends her for the first time. But let's not get sentimental. Portia's sudden change of heart has more to do with social status than maternal instincts. Penelope will become a Bridgerton soon, which is mega prestigious. Penn calls out her mother for her selfishness, and after standing up for herself, she sneaks off to write another pamphlet. Afterwards, at a Bridgerton ball, Eloise confronts Penelope about her secret, giving her until midnight to tell Colin. The night is eventful, with Anthony and Kate announcing their pregnancy and Colin giving a speech about his engagement. Eloise, not one to be left out, drops some not-so-subtle hints in her own speech about the importance of honesty. Meanwhile, Cressida unloads her own drama that she is to be married off to an old man on Eloise, but she brushes it off. If you do not find a husband soon, your father and I will be forced to find one for you. Because just as Penelope is about to tell Colin the truth, Cressida announces she's Lady Whistledown in a desperate attempt to sabotage her wedding. Talk about crashing the party. And that bombshell leaves everyone floored, especially poor Penelope, who drops like a fainting heroine in a melodrama. And that's where the episode ends. What a cliffhanger. Now, to episode six. Penelope is fuming because Cressida is taking credit for her work as Lady Whistledown. At first, Penn considers picking up her quill again, but after some advice from Eloise and Madame Modiste, she decides to retire. Do you think she will return? Things get tense when Cressida's dad wants to send her off to Scotland, but her mother steps in. She is sure Cressida lacks the wits to be Lady Whistledown. Ouch. Talk about motherly insight. Meanwhile, Francesca and John are dancing around their romance, fearing the Queen's wrath. In church, Penelope has another chance to come clean to Colin, but she hesitates again. Frustrating, right? I've always loved you, Colin. 
There is nothing that makes me happier than being with you. Cressida and her mom try to cook up a fake Lady Whistledown pamphlet, but the Queen's not convinced. Penelope's mad as heck and decides to take matters into her own hands, sneaking out of the ball to write her own Whistledown scoop. And just when things couldn't get crazier, Colin plays detective and catches Penelope red-handed at the print shop. Colin, I can take care of myself. Then what good am I to you? Looks like the truth's out. Will Colin be as understanding in the show as he was in the book? Well, we'll see soon. And finally, we come to the episodes seven and eight. First off, Colin and Penelope get into a huge fight, filled with some pretty nasty words and painful remarks. <laughs> and guess what? Colin ends up at a brothel. Though, he's not exactly in the mood for any extracurricular activities. Take all sticks out. Looks like it's going to be a rough ride for our favorite lovebirds, but don't worry. True Bridgerton style means they'll obviously kiss and pick up by the end. After all, what's a little drama without a happy ending? But wait, there's more drama. Benedict's about to reveal a little something about himself. He's bi. Yep, it's happening. And brace yourselves because there's no Sophie this season. Big bummer, right? Now for the book fans out there, here's a twist. Michael's now Michaela, a woman, and get this, she's John's sister. Who could have thought? And if you're not buying into the leaks, let's dissect a recent interview with Victor Alley, who plays John. He was pretty tight-lipped about Michael, using them and avoiding any gender reveals. Suspicious, right? Seems like he's dodging spoilers, but dropping hints like breadcrumbs. So, guys, what do you think? Are you satisfied with the leaks, or did you expect something else from the remaining episodes? Let me know in the comments.